Paul is opening up. Oh. Do you know what happened there? Paul is Paul is opening up this letter to the this young uh, church at Thessalonica with this beautiful word that um, whatever they are facing today, they are the gathering, the ecclesia of the Thessalonians which is already in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When we gather as a church, we start in love. The creative love of the Father to the Son and the sacrificial committed love of Jesus to the Father. That's where we start from. That is our starting point. And when I read the the opening line of this letter, uh, it was one of the earliest letters of Paul, to uh, the, one of the earliest churches. Uh, it's only maybe 17 or 18 years after the crucifixion when he's writing this and, and speaking to this, this church. And uh, the sense of excitement that I, that I had in the Wednesday podcast around this word lies in these, in these opening words uh, that we begin in this, this place of God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. We, we begin in a place of love and relationship. That's where our gathering starts. I get a huge buzz out of um, being in places, caught up in a huge array of thoughts and feelings and experiences and emotions, in particular places with memories and stories and people's faces and the touch and sound of distinct settings. Alison will remember an occasion when I was down in the South Bank in, in London in one of the big brutalist buildings on the South Bank there. And I, I felt I needed to just hug the concrete a wee bit just to feel that, that material presence of it. There's something about place and about particular places that, that gets me and, 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 uh, and strikes quite deeply within me. The sound of distinct settings with memories and thoughts and, and emotions and feelings. And I can't work out whether that's because I'm an architect or that's why I became an architect, but each place is distinct and made through a vast range of relationships and materials of what you can see and hear and know and experience in that particular place. And I can get lost at times in the sense of, of, of being somewhere. So when Paul opens up this letter to these young Christians and says to them, this is the place where you are. This is where your gathering takes place. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to feel what it is like for them to be in this place. And what it says to us about when we meet. How does this word feed our gathering in these new days? First thing to say is that it was no easy thing for these young Christians to gather. Paul had first been with them in Thessalonica and the church had taken shape just a year or two before this letter was written. It's there in Acts 17 if you wanted to, to turn to it. And the antagonism to Paul's message in the city was such that he and his friend Silas had to flee at night, escape the city at night. But this gathering had taken shape despite that. And they spent time in there and it is clear from these young Christians that they were facing suffering and attack and, and yet they gather. And as they gather at this time, Paul's letter is read out to them. And uh, here the words come. He's saying, you, you as you gather, you're gathering in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what your gathering looks like, feels like. This is the landscape that you gather on. The field where you sit as you gather. And we walk together. When we gather, we walk together in the creative love of the Father to the Son. And in the sacrificial committed love of Jesus to the Father. That's the ground in which we gather. And we have three pictures in the verses that follow of what that kind of gathering looks like, feels like. What it's like to walk through that landscape a little. It, it is of work produced by faith, labour prompted by love, and endurance inspired by hope. And we're going to turn to these in a, in a wee minute. But first I wanted just to take us into a place of rest. In the presence of God. Where we can gather too. Psalm 84 is a beautiful gift to us. Which speaks of the longing of the psalmist. To, to be in the, the, the temple of God. To be in that place of gathering in Jerusalem. Where he's experienced this relationship with, uh, with God. This place with God. And I want to just read this. And as I read it. Please just take a moment just to sense where God is speaking to you and just to rest where he is and to rest in, in what God is preparing 
for us. It says this, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. A place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They're ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. Autumn rains cover it with pools. And they go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. I often feel the blessing of reading this with those who maybe can't make it to the church for a, for a period. Maybe that illness is stopping them or what, whatever else. And I quite, I feel I need at times just to sit with them and to read these, read these words with them. But then also to speak of what Paul shares in the first line of his letter. When, when we gather, we are already gathering in God's place here now. We gather here now, we dwell in the love of God, in the presence of God. When we gather, we are already by the gift of God, dwelling where God is in the love between the Father and the Son. That's where we start from. And we don't need to go somewhere else. We don't need to chase down God to meet with him. As we gather, he is here. And I want us to rest in that this morning. You don't need to be somewhere else to meet with God. You can meet with God here. The courts of the Lord are here this morning because this is where we gather. How we gather is a wholly different question. And we're looking towards the 18th of October and how is a possible first physical gathering in the church for those who are able. But that how is a different question from where. Where we gather is in the love of God, Father and Son, invited by the Spirit. But what is the feel of this place of gathering? Paul values these three expressions of the Thessalonians in their gathering and their life together. First of all, the work produced by faith. This, this sale place that we've been talking about for a few, a few weeks now. And I've been chasing it up. When we ordered it, we were told three days delivery. And that was over three weeks ago, I think, uh, now. I've been phoning them, been in touch. And uh, it was meant to be delivered across this week. And it was. It was dispatched on, on, on Monday. Uh, it's now been sitting in the Glasgow depot for about three days. Don't know why. I'm going to have to phone them tomorrow and check on what's, on what's happening. And then we need to organise the deck and get all these things uh, around. Um, but the making of new things does not always go to plan. Other engineers and architects in the congregation here will understand that, that point. It doesn't go to the times we hoped for, to the expectations we hold. But you work at it because you trust in what is to come. That God holds a future for this work that comes out of faith in him. That still plays delays are just a wee, a, wee, uh, a wee immediate momentary thing that will pass in no time. But it's a wee picture of responding to a call of new making in faith. Trusting in what will God will do in this. And then when things do not go to your plans, keeping going and wrestling it out. Keep on working because this is a work of faith. So where are we fearful that what you're being called to do in faith is not working out? Hear the call this morning to come rest in this gathering this morning. In the love of God. And let God's committed Creative, sacrificial love meets you where you need it to feed you and strengthen you for the work that you are doing. Let the work he has called you to, to take place, let it happen in his way and not in yours, but keep at it. Let God bring a fruitfulness through your work. The second aspect that Paul picks up on is the labour prompted by love. There are two words used for work and labour in these opening letters, and they're different. They seem quite similar to us, but they're different, different words. For the work one, it has to do simply with the productive work involved in getting something done. 
to keep at it until it's done. The word used here for labor, and just a few verses on in, uh, in Thessalonians, the word used for labor is more about the spiritual pain and difficulty and struggle of that making of that work. Paul points to this expression of the Thessalonians' life together like this, that when you love, that might lead you to difficult places along painful and broken paths, but keep going. In our online Alpha course, one of the sessions recently talked with Jackie Pullinger, who has led a work of God's calling in the walled city of Kowloon in Hong Kong since the 1960s. And she's transformed people within that opium-infested triad gang-led part of the city. And someone puts it like this, as she got to work loving the unlovable, in many people's eyes, God showed up. This is her word, having tasted all his love, I wanted to do, all I wanted to do was to share it until I died. Her work, prompted by love, has taken her through the darkest paths. But God has led her. And where it's been difficult to share this love, he has come and refreshed her. And so, again, the word here is, if you are finding this difficult just now, to practice love, if you're finding love difficult just now, Come to God's people, to the gathering of God's people, where God is, and um, be refreshed where God's people gather, because this is the ground where God's love is. And the endurance inspired by hope to follow faithfully with love needs endurance. To make things new by faith through love needs endurance. And the third expression Paul points to is this very thing, endurance inspired by hope because of the Lord Jesus, the hope of the resurrection. The cross is not the end. Pain and the struggles are not the end. The resurrection to new life is God's word to us. That is the end. When we gather, we walk together in the love of Jesus Christ, raised to new life, and if things seem too much just now, too difficult, too painful, or you don't see what can happen next, or how things can move on, then this word says to us, rest here for a time in the gathering of God's people. Let Jesus walk with you as we gather together. He came through crucifixion. He's raised to new life by the Father. Let his resurrection promise feed your soul. To endure what you face, knowing the promise of the resurrection. Where is faith hard just now for you? Where is loving difficult for you just now? Where are you needing signs of the resurrection in your life? What I hear in this word is rest for a while in the gathering of God's people. And let us walk together in all that creative love of the Father and the sacrificial committed love of Jesus where we're invited to share in this joyfully by the Spirit. Rest in this, sit in this place for a time. Gathered here. I I find so much joy in the midst of our Zoom chats both before and after uh, these these live streams because we we are gathered and and sharing with one another. And in the midst of all of that, we get strengthened in our endurance builds and I pray let the sacrificial committed love of Jesus in the gathering stand alongside you to endure to work at what is hard to love and to work towards this new making of God trusting him now when so much is needing renewal let the love of God in this renewing committed creative sustaining sacrificial love refresh you this morning As we are gathered here, drawn by the joyful invitation of the Spirit. We didn't even get time to go to that part of the passage, but this is already longer than I I normally have in in, in these uh, Zoom mornings. We didn't even get to that joyful invitation of the Spirit to share in this that comes just in a few verses on from that passage that we we were reading in there. But I call on us to sit and be refreshed in this gathering because God is here. God is in the midst. We sit in the love of God. We are gathered in this love of God, Father, Son, invited by the Spirit joyfully to be refreshed in this time and to go out and live enduring, faithfully, lovingly into the world that is suffering in sacrificial love and enduring hope. 
And that's our ecclesia, to do that. To walk here, rest here, when we gather, and go out and take the love of God. This is my ecclesia. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of your words. We sit for a few minutes just to sense your grace towards us, your love towards us. I pray, Lord, for those who are finding these days difficult, where the, the lockdown seems to be never-ending, for those who are shut in, for those who uh, don't really have many in their bubble just now and who are feeling quite alone. Lord, I pray that your Spirit would lead them joyfully into gathering with your people in whatever way that works, in, in Zoom, in live stream, in paper, in phone calls. Lord, whenever we talk, chat, gather, let us know that we are loved, held by you, and you're doing a new thing. Bless us, we pray, in your name. Amen.